Hey guys, welcome to The Powerful Man Show, where we help married businessmen save their marriages without having to talk about it, get unstuck, and gain clarity in their lives. As I like to say, life is too short for average. I'm your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. Now let's get this started. Mr. Dougie Fresh, how are we, sir? I'm doing great, man. Uh, it's a great day. Had an amazing date night slash day yesterday with the wife. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we had a great time. We, if I'll set the scene. We, you know, I live in a small town. I grew up in Southern California, but I live in a small town in Oregon now. And you know, you kind of, even though the pandemic's over, we're starting to get to know a lot of people and the business owners and the community here. And uh, my wife and I walked into a restaurant outdoors just a beautiful day and um they have these really plush couches one set of couches that kind of overlooks the entire restaurant and the vibe that's going on and um, they sat us there and you know we got we got a couple of adult beverages and appetizers and just had an amazing conversation we were laughing and giggling and so much fun and uh you know the nanny was there so then we decided to come home and uh the, the nanny was smart enough to move the kids somewhere else. <laughs> and I'll just say we turned up the music uh, and had a great time. Nice. It's good for you guys. I'm yeah. Pleased that you did that. Yeah. Every um, week we book, do something like that. Nice. Um, booked your flights to Iceland? I have booked my flights to Iceland. Um, so I've got flights for, <laughs> check this out. And so guys will get an idea. Flying to Arizona, as you know, for a mastermind group where we'll be going, where I'll be going to. Unfortunately, you can't get there yet. Um, then I got my flights booked for the Alpha Reset in Vermont in August, uh, mm -hmm. and then we fly my flights booked for uh, Iceland in October. And then, luckily, the Alpha Resets, the next Alpha Reset, will be in the U.S. Here, will be in Bend, Oregon. So uh, I just have to hop in the car to make it to that one. Nice. Yeah, it's uh, it kind of parlays into what I want to talk to you about today because obviously just all the travel plans you've got there. Um, the idea of not dimming your light for your partner. And obviously, um, I'm sure a lot of guys will resonate with this. We work with so many guys whose wives uh, turn out to be stay-at-home moms. And these are smart women as well, right? Women that have previously had successful careers. They're very strong, confident, independent women, as yep. is your wife and, yep. and Amelia. Um, and for, I'll speak for you and I. In fact, I'll speak for the men in the movement as well, because they do a lot of traveling when we take them on the events a few times a year, right? Um, when they see us taking the trips, be it Iceland, be it the Alpha Reset, be it whatever, um, it's striking that balance between owning the life that you're living, right? Saying, hey, this is what I'm doing, going away, having a great time, guilt-free, sharing that in the conversations when you might FaceTime on the days that you're there, and then coming back and also being able to be willing to share all the great times that you've had, again, without dimming your light, without feeling guilty. For you and I, maybe even going down and sharing some of the wins of men are having the movement, how the movement's growing, how the, the team that we have in the background, the work they're doing together. And um, there's a lot of opportunities where we could dim our light. And in all honesty, I have dimmed my light at times in the past. Never felt right. I've always been like, oh, I'm doing it again. Oh, you know when you're doing it, right? And it doesn't serve me. Definitely doesn't serve Amelia. Um, nobody wins in that situation. But I want to talk about that concept because I think it's something that a lot of the guys will resonate with. I know you and I have had conversations about it a lot. Um, so I'll let you take it away. Yeah, this is such an important conversation. This is actually one my wife pulled me aside early in our marriage. And she said, you know, what? you often dim your lights to make, to make other people feel secure with themselves. And I, I still do it, right? I was just thinking about as you're talking, you know, we're going to Iceland. So when I, when I run into other couples, you know, we have kids. So we run into other couples often, you know, to get the kids to play and we're talking, I'm talking to the other dads and they're always like, Oh, where, where'd you just get back from? Or where you're going? And I find myself like, Oh, you know, just got back from Cancun, you know, and I, and I play it down. 
you know, not like, oh, it was this epic event. You know, mm. people were crying. We had transformations where people have changed their lives or we're going to Iceland and there's going to be about 40 business leaders in Iceland having the time of our lives, but also doing a deep, deep dive into bettering ourselves. And, and the reason, I, you know, that I do that and I find myself still doing that is the fear of rejection. Honestly, I don't want, mm. I don't want the other guys to get jealous of me and not want to spend time. Like, cause when I'm hanging out with the dads, although I'm very secure with myself and I don't mind hanging out by myself. Also, I know it's important for my family to have that connection. And it's also so often why a lot of the guys listening to this who are successful business owners don't talk about all their successes, right? It, they don't do mm. it because they don't want to sound braggadocious. And I think that's where, for me, Tim, is where I dim my light the most, is where I don't want, I, even though I get excited, mm -hmm. I don't want other people to feel left out. And I don't want other people to get jealous and therefore ostracize me, right? And, you know, oh, I don't want to hang out with Doug because every time I hang out with Doug, I feel bad about my job. Or I feel bad about the lifestyle that I've chosen, or I feel bad about my marriage because his is going so well. And the truth is, you know, and I know this, yet I still do it from time to time. The truth is, is that when you shine your light bright, you actually become a beacon for others. When you dim your light, you're giving people permission to play small. And that's really a disservice. And when I think of it that way, Tim, it, what I want to do is record videos for men around the world and, and showing them the other side and saying, hey, look, you can have a friggin' kick-ass business. You can have a killer relationship with your wife, connection with your kids, amazing sex, and you can travel the world with other business leaders just like you. Great, solid dudes who will have your back, you know, whenever you need it. Not, not the remember when friends that I always talk about. And those are, you know, friends that we all have from like high school or something. And nothing wrong with them. But you know what I'm talking about, guys. You get together with those friends and all you're talking about is, you know, the football game in high school or the prank you played on Rick or whoever else it may have been. And you rehash the same friggin' stories time and time again. And maybe there's something new around politics or, or something dumb, but, you know, or a softball game. But there's no depth to those relationships anymore. It's all based on a history that was 20 some years old. Um, and you just do it because it's convenient and you feel a little guilty about leaving Joey behind. No offense, Joey. Um, and, you know, all you're telling is remember win stories. You don't have those solid stories. So when you shine your light bright and you allow yourself to be fully expressed and seen, you allow those people to rise. And it also attracts other people around you who are shining brightly. Right. That is the key. And that's something that I've learned over the years, Tim, that has been really, really powerful for me. And it's allowed me to meet some really amazing men in this local community that I'm in who are also interested in the movement that you and I have going on and the men that listen to this are involved in. So, okay. Um, that's one side of it, right? Not dimming your light with uh, your friends and the men. Um, I'm curious. Yep. Why would you say, well, let me ask you the, uh, I know the answer, but just for the listeners, um, have you ever found yourself dimming your light with Erin? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and what I find, I think for me, um, you know, dimming my light is the default. I think some of you guys understand like being the nice guy is a, can be a default. Now I've switched it around and it works really well yesterday ending up in some bagels and some amazing sex is a great example it's because i switched around from being the that nice guy like the way i was raised my whole life to being more the wolf my wife responds so well to it guys so well I, you know i'll even find these times where i'm saying something that i think man this might sound cheesy right because it's not my default programming for 40 years my wife responds to it so well and she loves it. And she even tells me, I love it when you lead. And I love it when you're like this. So I do find myself occasionally dimming my light for my wife. And guess what? She hates it. She hates it. She doesn't like it. When I allow my, my light to shine brighter, it gives my wife, one, gives her permission for her light to shine brighter. Two, it's like a moth to a flame, right? 
it makes me, and my wife would tell you this, it makes me more attractive because I'm mm-hmm. going after my passions. I'm going after my purpose and I'm doing it unapologetically. And when you do that, guys, I can assure you, even though it might feel weird for you, you know, a lot of us have been raised, you don't brag or what have you. You don't, you know, don't, don't shine brightly because you don't want other people to feel bad. And that's the way I was raised. But the truth is, you know, with your wife, especially, if you dim your light, you dim her light. Right. Mm-hmm. And if you tried just to dim your light so she can shine brighter and feel better about herself, that's not the way it works. Mm-hmm. It's just not. You get to be fully expressed and shine your light to its brightest ability so that she can operate under that light with you. It reminds me of a time with Amelia and I. So obviously we've been living in this place for, I don't know, about 18 months or so. Uh, the reason why we moved here, similar to why you moved to where you live, is lifestyle, right? There's a yeah. great outdoor lifestyle. Mountains, ocean, beach, forest, all that kind of stuff. Um, Amelia is my partner, Doug. Um, <laughs> um, and anyway, when we, when he first had to come around to springtime of last year, spring, summertime ish, um, obviously the movement was going through a lot of growth then. And I she'd say, Hey, I'm, I'm going to go down to the beach. It'd be like Wednesday, I don't know, midday. And, um, you, you know I me, mean? I can get quite rigid on my routines, right? So I'm going to get up and do my alpha rise and shine. I'm going to work out. I'm going to do my cold shower. I'm going to get back. I'm going to be at my desk and I've got back to back stuff. And at the same time, I'll then decompress. I'll have some fun. But at the same time, English weather is also unpredictable, right? So that rigidity can sometimes mean you can let miss out on those little opportunities that you get to actually go and enjoy the beach because the weather isn't always good <laughs> for you to be able to do that anyway long story short i found myself almost dimming amelia's light in this process not only once or twice but i caught it but interesting dynamics started to to play out because when i was dimming her light so she would say oh, i'm gonna go to the beach i might say something like um oh, i guess i'll just go and work then or so just having a joke but at the same time, there was also an underlying theme there, right? Yeah. That then made her it. feel, yeah, that then made her feel guilty for going and enjoying her, herself at the beach whilst I was, quite frankly, honestly, choosing. You know, I could have gone to the beach while I was choosing to do something else instead. Been a bit of a victim in that kind of uh, context of conversation. Um, but what would then happen was when I was then going to go do something for myself, she would then do the same to me. Oh, so you're going to go book into the hotel, are you? Or you're going to go and go away for a night? Are you going to go, oh, well, I'll just stay here with the dogs or I'll just do this or are you going to leave us or whatever? So I noticed this dynamic playing out, which then led to us both wanting to dim our lights, right? Yeah. Um, so I didn't bring it up with her. I just shifted it. So the next time, by the following week or the next time the weather was good, I'd say to her, so what are you going to do? Are you going to go to the beach? Are you going to go to the mat? I'd be encouraging her. And then when she, when she went and did a thing, I'd obviously be asking her questions about it and celebrating the fact that she'd gone and done whatever she'd done. Not celebrating it as though, hey, so great you went to the beach, but just sharing in the positivity and the experience that she had there, right? Yep. Now, the great thing about that was obviously that also shifted how she then was with me. And then it got to the point where she was then suggesting, saying little things when I was away with you or whoever, instead of me not wanting to share the chef's table that we had with the wine pairings and we did it like two or three nights in Costa Rica. Incredible, the chef coming, amazing food, right? Amazing food, overlooking an amazing sunset uh, in March, gorgeous sun whilst, or March, April time. Whilst Amelia is obviously in the UK and it's kind of coming out of winter. Got to share it with her. And instead of her response, instead of doubting whether or not I should share it or whether, what can I share? I shouldn't share this. I can share that complaining. No, I got to completely own the experience, enjoy it, share it. And she reciprocated. Oh, it's so great that you got to do that. What was the food like? 
And it was, it kind of dawned on me, wow, it's, it's great that we're in this position now where we're able to actually celebrate each other's light shining brightly. Yeah. And all it took was for one of us, which was me, to shift the dynamic. And then it all started to shift. Well, that's what it is, right? So again, culturally, we've been taught, <laughs> you know, to dim our light. So, you know, because otherwise if we shine too brightly, people will try to extinguish us, right? Put out the flame, so to speak. But the truth is, if we shine brighter and we're staying in our power, they can't. And it becomes more attractive. And on top of that, when we're in this, this feeling, this energy of shining brightly, if you will, like, like you were, we then allow other people to shine brightly. We give them not only the permission, mm -hmm. but we encourage it because you're not coming from a place of being braggadocious, which is an ego play. You're coming from this place of just sharing yourself, sharing your excitement. You know, when I came back from, you know, Costa Rica and was talking about the chef's table, et cetera, and things that we did there, surfing and everything. I came back with such natural joy. And my wife was like, hey, I was alone with the kids. You know, she had that energy coming into it. However, I just kept shining and she loved it. She even said, I love this energy you're bringing, you know, mm. because women will often say that the man, you know, in, in, the, in the relationship carries the energy for the whole house. Mm -hmm. right? How many times, guys, have you heard your wife say that your energy affects the house? or in some fashion of that. Just think about it. My guess is all of you have heard this. Now, if you haven't heard it for a long time, it's because maybe you've become so submissive in your house and so dormant, so to speak, that you have no energy. You're not bringing anything to the table. And, and I get it. A lot of guys get there because you try to be the nice guy and finally you're just like, screw it. I'm just going to shut up. I'm going to shut up and I'm not going to rock the boat because that'll just be easier. I'm here to tell you it's not. You get to shine brightly. You got one shot at this game we call life. We talk about it a lot. Maybe we get another one. None of us know for sure, right? With a great deal of certainty. Some of us might have some hope. We got one shot. How old are you? 30, 40, 50, 60? I don't know how old you are listening to this, but you don't have yesterday to redo, right? You have tomorrow to do. So hopefully you do. Hopefully you do. And so with that, you get to shine as bright as possible and be that lighthouse that is in that storm or in the eye of the storm or anywhere else, you're shining brightly regardless. Because when you dim, you shine, you dim, you shine, you do this little dance, you become less trustworthy to the people around you. And I'm not saying mm -hmm. you have to go out there and brag about everything you're doing. For you guys that are on here that are going to Iceland with us, you know, yeah, tell everybody you're going to Iceland. You don't have to brag about it. You just explain it. Hey, look, I'm, I'm going to Iceland with 40 other powerful business leaders and it's going to be a blast. We're going to do some great work and, you know, most likely going to be a life-changing event in more ways than one. That's great. Now you're showing people, hey, that's possible. That exists out there. 40 great guys or business leaders who are doing it for the right reasons, saving their marriages, for their families, for their communities, getting together, true friendships, true brotherhood. For most men, that, that, that's something they've always wanted, but have never heard of because they have the remember win friends. So to have that possibility out there, you're actually basically showing somebody what's possible. And you show this with your wife too. You allow her to step into her greatness. And when your wife is able to fully express because you're fully expressed, that transmutes into the bedroom as well. Not mm -hmm. only do you get that respect and the admiration in her eyes, but she now, she's now free to express her energy in a lot of ways. And feminine energy, when it's fully expressed, is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Completely. Um, one final thing as well. Look, you, you touched on this at the beginning. I think it's important to to reinforce this. The men that you really want in your life, the guys who are secure in themselves, regardless of how they live, they will want you to shine your light and they'll be very comfortable around you shining your light, regardless of whether they have aspirations to do what you do or be who you are or travel like you do or whether they have as much money or not, it's, it's irrelevant. They'll be, they'll be able to share in the experience. They'll ask you questions. They'll be happy for you because they're comfortable in who they are. They are quality men. Yes. They're the kind of men that you want in your life because you know where you stand with them. They're honest. 
they're comfortable, they're grounded in who they are, they're going to give great advice for the most part as well. Whereas the guys who are insecure, who try and pull you down, who try and compete, who try and minimize what you're doing, who I could go on and on and on. You all know who those are. We all have them in our lives. Yep. Yeah, it's a great saying. Uh, the people who mind don't matter and the people who matter don't mind. Yeah. So very true. So gentlemen, if you get one thing out of this conversation, one thing alone, it's to play the game that you were meant to play. Play big, right? Play big, not only for yourself, because a lot of us truthfully will let ourselves down, but play big for the people around you. Play big for your wife, play big for your kids, and definitely play big for you. And take action, whatever that is. Step into it and swing at that bat, right? Take a swing at the ball, right? Whatever you need to do to make that next step. But don't dim your light. Don't dim your light for me. Don't dim your light for Tim. And certainly don't dim your light for your wife or your family. They'll love you for it. Guys, we'll see you next time. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this episode. But as I always say, in the moment of insight, take massive action. You see, there are two types of men that listen to a podcast like this. Those that go on from one podcast or show to another, just hoping things are gonna change and realizing that they're gonna be in the same place month after month, year after year. You see, I was this guy, so I completely get it. You may just not be ready. But there's also a second man, a second man that listens to a show just like this. And this is a guy who takes massive action so they can shorten the learning curve, compress time, and get results to be the wolf. See, WOLF is an acronym for wise, open, loving, and fierce. Now, ask yourself, which one am I? And just be honest with yourself there. And there's no judgment on my end, but if you're ready to move from deactivated deer mode, which is defend, excuse, explain, react, to activated WOLF, wise, open, loving, and fierce, then go over to thepowerfulman.com forward slash grow. And go there now. In fact, I'll make it super easy for you. I will even put the link right in the description here so you can just click it and go over there now to learn more. Guys, in the moment of insight, take massive action. Go from deactivated to activated because like I said, life is too short for average. And I'll see you on the next episode.